tonight. I never expected my hero to be a civilian. <laughs> uh, or, or a sports figure for that matter. Stories of inspiration and determination. It was amazing. Uh, the audience leaped to their feet. and There was a standing ovation. And um, I was praying they wouldn't go too long because I was about to lose it. The challenges of life often bring out the best in us. I think it shows the kids that if you try to do something, that, that anything is possible. Slowly and steadily live. For the next half hour. Bruno got put on the world map that day. A six news special. It was kind of like a cop robbers thing, you know, and it had its challenges. And they're out trying to catch you and you're out to beat them. The best of Brian Mastry reports. Good evening. Every week, I find myself learning important life lessons from the people I interview. Sometimes it's what they say in the moment. Oftentimes, it's what they do and how they carry themselves. We begin tonight with the story of a small Nebraska community landing on the world stage, teaching all of us how to move a barn. 1988 was a great year for Mike and Karen Ostry. A week before they got married, their small Nebraska community celebrated its 100th anniversary. Bruno got put on the world map that day. What started as a promotion to bring people to town for the centennial took a life of its own. There's a lot of people. Thousands of people stopped by his father's farm because they sensed disaster. There were 328 of us lifting this barn. The Ostry family needed to move this barn to higher ground. It kept getting flooded. It was something that I guess has never been done before. Machines would not be involved. The idea was that we were going to try it. It was manpower. 344 neighbors volunteered to move the barn from the 1920s. If you're doing something you've never done before, you better be praying. OK, everyone, all together, slowly and steadily live. There she goes! Baby. What happened next has been a story that gets shared again and again around Bruno, Nebraska. It worked. It worked. And for those who watched from the field waiting for failure that day, they lost cash. I could see it, money passing back and forth behind me. I just, can I have my cut? <laughs> so there were a lot of lost bets on that. They didn't think that it would happen. She made all of those pictures. Yeah. The barn belonged to Herman and Donna Ostry. In his mind, there was no doubting the plan. 100% that it's going to work because I was had faith in the our maker. <laughs> careful of your heels, careful But for all the success away. that day... Does that still uh, irk you a little bit? Yeah. Herman Ostry remains frustrated by one thing 29 years later. See, everybody thought it was important except the Guinness Book. The packet of information the Ostry submitted to the Guinness Book of Records, complete with verification from the Nebraska Division of Weights and Measures about moving a barn with human muscle, was rejected. The deputy editor of Guinness Records told them barn moving was not an activity which has shown itself to be of widespread interest. So what would you say to the Guinness people now if they showed up? It's about time. <laughs> but then again, who thought 344 people would move a 20,000 pound barn 115 feet. It's wow. fun listening to the new generations not having experienced it or knew it at the time to, to yeah. look it up and say, wow, you did, you did that? Yes, they did. By the way, we're still waiting for Guinness records to weigh in again. Now to a story of perseverance. A young woman who has been battling for her health earlier this year crossed another milestone by going back to the gym. Good job. Okay, got to keep our feet planted, though. I want you to stay right here and reach. Keeping Heather Boulay grounded has never been easy. Leave your foot there, leave your foot there. Oh. Three times a week. Doing good. One more minute, and then we'll change directions. She returns to Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital's Lincoln Campus. Good. Yep, slide that hand down. Very good, Heather. To convince her brain and body to work together again. It was January 2014 when Heather, as captain of the acrobatic gymnastics team at Union College in Lincoln, was being hoisted to the ceiling to install her aerial silks when something malfunctioned in the equipment. She fell 23 feet. She fractured the left side of her skull, a severe traumatic brain injury. She's come a long way in the last two years, and uh, it gives us hope for the next one and the next one. But for her to start saying words, it was 18 months, um, and I was just ecstatic, jumping for joy the first time. 
she said something, and I believe hi mm -hmm. was her first word. And then from then on, it's nice to be outside. And now she initiates the conversation. When something awful happens, many of us will do everything we can to avoid where it took place. Let's take a left. Heather Boulay isn't like that. Heather dealt with everything in her life. If there was something bad, she dealt with it in the moment and moved forward. She never looked back. And that's how we've treated this whole journey. Even with the injury, that philosophy remains. Our next routine is a special guest performer. Last weekend, Heather returned to the Union College gym along with her mother and one of her sisters. Miss Heather Boulay. Her passion for gymnastics is still there in her heart. It was amazing. Uh, the audience leaped to their feet and there was a standing ovation and um, I was praying they wouldn't go too long because I was about to lose it. The routine lasted two minutes, demonstrating a strength and balance that's hard to comprehend considering where she was two years ago. It was just beautiful to see her doing what she loves and is so passionate about and to see how happy she was doing it. The performance recorded by Union College may never leave Heather Boulay's video playlist. Did you watch the video of you performing? I regret. How many times have you watched it? One, two, three. Her family tells me it's more like 20. She just hasn't stopped getting better. Gymnastics has been Heather Boulay's biggest motivator. Who knows how she'll top this next year. Heather continues her rehab with the goal of becoming a school teacher. Next. You know, we have so many, uh, just so many opportunities in life. You know, you have to take advantage of them when you can. One heart from one family to another. <laughs> That's how we start the party. And how it's impossible to ignore these infectious attitudes when the best of Brian Mastery reports returns. The best of Brian Mastery reports. Transplant stories by their very nature are remarkable. How someone can give life through death. In this next example, we call it the Indy 500 heart. Hi Kathleen. Hi. How are you doing? For someone who measures their life by reinventing themselves. You had such a radiant smile on your face. I see it's still there. 2016 will be hard to top for Dan Alexander. It's so great to see you. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Is the uh, family doing well? Yes. On the cardiac floor of Nebraska Medicine. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps in the road. He easily shifts from volunteer. Your worst enemy is, is getting an infection. To philosopher. From hope comes the will to live. To preacher. There's a lot of unknowns here, but I know you'll be with them through the entire time. Hi. Checking in, Dan Alexander. He gets it. Last year, it was Dan Alexander, the patient. For three years, a mechanical heart pump kept him alive. Then he got a call in August. The Army veteran was getting a new heart. Dan Alexander described it as a spiritual awakening when we talked to him 12 days later. I'm eternally grateful to the donor. Um, and, and my love goes to them, whoever they are. One day, he said he hoped to meet his donor's family. That day arrived last month, Easter weekend. They came to him. Led by the donor's sister and his parents, they made their way from Epley Airfield to Papillion and Dan Alexander's front door. Up to today, they've talked and texted and exchanged letters but these are the first hugs. I never expected my hero to be a civilian, <laughs> uh, or, or a sports figure for that matter. The donor, Brian Clawson. He raced cars for a living. He died after a crash at an event in Kansas last August. Because he was an organ donor, the 27-year-old saved not just Dan Alexander's life, but four others. I'm part of their healing process. They are part of mine. Let us introduce you to Brian Clawson. His fiance, Lauren Stewart, made the trip to Nebraska too. Brian made the people around him strive to be better. After sharing stories, the Clawson family took turns, listening to Brian's heart. His mother felt every beat. Here's somebody who gave his heart to me. He died and gave his heart to me. Um, that's, 
That's what I call a hero. Until recently, Dan Alexander didn't know a thing about racing. To me, it was just a bunch of loud cars going in circles. Behind the wheel, he admits his right foot is heavier now, and his heart will flutter at the sound of a loud engine. This week, the Clawson family invited him to one of the crown jewels of racing, the Indianapolis 500, a place he's never been, but his heart has. He ran Indy three times. Life is beautiful. Dan Alexander's next reinvention being the vehicle, the mouthpiece, the example to convince others to become organ donors like Brian Clawson was. It was two families coming together, um, you know, forever connected by heart donation. Dan Alexander has joined the Clawson family to get more people to become organ donors. It's called Driven to Save Lives. Still ahead. I didn't have any hair then either. Yeah, but I'm better looking now. <laughs> Retired cops sharing war stories. People can change their lives. And if you don't have that, then it's really a tragedy. But wait until you hear who crashes the party when this six news special returns. In this day and age, there seems to be a fundraiser for just about everything. But in late July, there was a disease so ultra rare that that wasn't even the case. As one of the children told me, that's how we start the party. Just come right up to the door and just If there's walk. any doubt about the power and magic of an airport hug, just keep your eyes on Levi. Oh, there he is! A long flight from Mississippi to Omaha did nothing to drain the energy of this 11-year-old. This is the very first time he's coming to Nebraska. No disrespect, but Levi really wants to see Nina's two sons, the other members of his small but dedicated club of self-described superheroes. The only three genetically confirmed children in America together for the weekend. Levi plans a covert strike. Oh, you want me to hide? He tucks behind a corner next to the main entrance. You buddies are just pulling up. And urges all of us at Epley Airfield to please keep quiet. Don't ruin the surprise. He's a hero. Danny, where's Levi? Where's Levi? Boys have always met for medical appointments, but never just to hang out and have fun. This is actually their fourth time seeing each other, and they pick right up where they left off. You, you would think that they grew up together. Ah! Arshan and Johan and Levi have what's called Jansons for short, meaning they're losing bone faster than it can grow, creating all sorts of medical problems. <laughs> So many things that they can't do. They can't play contact sports. Um, Levi can't jump on trampolines. The three boys will highlight the first ever Janssen's Foundation Walkathon this weekend. Of the 22 people in the world with the condition, five of them will be in Omaha. It's such a rare disease um, affecting very few people in the world, but the fact is no one's turned us down. Um, they've all embraced our mission, our goal of finding a cure for these children. But I think it shows the kids that if you try to do something, that, then anything is possible. Who knew baggage claim could hold such promise? Mom. While Dublin what? is a playground. Oh, I love sandwich there. Yeah. The kids and their parents will continue to push for funding and research to one day find a cure. We met so many people this year who made a difference. I never knew how to boil water <laughs> when you got there. <laughs> who can forget this family from Bellwood, Nebraska? Jack and Clara Seltzer celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. Their son John, well, he never walked after a high school football injury in 1971. So they've taken care of him most of their life, and now he's their caretaker. John Seltzer shared this advice with me in August. The last thing you want to lose in life is your sense of humor, because when you've lost that, you've lost everything. I think you're right. So keep smiling and keep laughing. We will, John. We will. A Bennington student this year inspired a number of people with his grit. He had been team manager for basketball and baseball, and then he decided he wanted to compete. Consider this, Evan needed a walker until he was 12 because he was born 
with an ultra-rare neurological condition affecting his balance, coordination, and fine motor skills. And now he wanted to run. Cross country is something unique that you don't have to run particularly fast. And, you know, maybe Evan's not going to be the greatest sprinter in the world, but he can run. He's got the grit that it takes to just go out and run. Shedding the manager role, Evan Gress is now the athlete in the middle of the action. He's done some pretty amazing things. Defied a lot of people, I think. His mother has noticed the growth. He feels more relaxed and more comfortable, and he feels more like he's um, part of the group uh, and not just sitting on the sidelines. Good job, Evan! You can see the full reports under the Brian Mastery Reports column at WWT.com. And we're back after the break. There are always exceptions to the rule, and sometimes those make for the most memorable of stories, as in this example of cops and robbers. That would show that the Add up the combined law enforcement experience in this room. I retired in 85. And we're talking centuries of police work. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Who is that guy? Department yearbooks add clarity to fading memories. Didn't have any hair then either. Yeah, but I'm better looking, though. <laughs> Once a month at the Millard Roadhouse. The Steimer's still alive. Retired officers and deputies share a meal and tell stories. The stories get worse every time we get together. <laughs> they go by the name Fuzz That Was. And my friend Jack here, he picks me up because I have a little hard time driving. The lunch conversation often comes around to the sobering moments of carrying a badge and gun. After seeing the, what one human being can do to another, it, it doesn't leave you. As a sniper with Omaha Police, Bob Seaborg has seen how it can end so quickly. We got the, the building surrounded. June 1974, a barricaded gunman held officers at bay for four hours at 25th and Parker. Seven Omaha police officers were injured. Officer Paul Neilds was killed, and so was the suspect. So that was probably one of the worst shootings in the history. There's no shortage of tragedy to discuss when you're serving and protecting for 35 years. We enforce the law. Jack was out breaking the law. A few years ago, Bob Seaborg crossed paths with Jack Ernst. It was kind of like a cop robbers thing, you know. And they knew each other. He was one of the best safe crackers in this whole area. Jack Ernst double majored in burglary and cracking safes. How many safes do you think you cracked over the years? Uh, <laughs> tons of them. Tons of them. We were getting frustrated. We couldn't capture him. Ernst had stolen a police radio, so he knew if the burglary unit was on to him. We used to uh, call him Jackie Boy. In 1968, the law finally won. It was Bob Seaborg who took him down at gunpoint and put him in prison for 27 years. Was it odd for a safe cracker to come to a place full of retired cops? <laughs> if you just told me this, Five years ago, four years ago, I said, it's crazy. Jack is, uh, he, he's part of our group, and, uh, and it goes to show you that there's always hope. People can change their lives, and if you don't have that, then it's really a tragedy. Jack Ernst and Bob Seaborg. I had a job because of <laughs> an unlikely friendship. Thanks for joining us as we shared what inspired us in 2017. We'll see you next time.